We welcome you into week four of the Mike Turner Show. Hello, everybody. I'm the voice of the Eagles, Adam Cavalier, alongside Carson Newman, head football coach Mike Turner. The Eagles fall in week four to the defending South Atlantic Conference champions, the Newberry Wolves, 25-21 to 21 in the final minute. Mike, uh, uh, an absolute heartbreaker in a second straight week. In position to win a game, kids play hard. Uh, but Newberry, a final drive that uh, finds the end zone with 38 seconds left. Uh, how do you sum up uh, a week four defeat to the Wolves? Well, we should have never let them be in a position to have a final drive. The game should have been over uh, early in the third quarter. We had chances there. Uh, we make a mistake. Uh, we, we've got to be a, a finisher. We, we've got to learn how to finish things. And, and it's not about uh, are they good enough to do that. Uh, we've just played the two teams that were picked to be first and second in the conference, and we're as good as or better uh, than both those teams. We've got to learn to finish better. Uh, we've got to learn to execute regardless of what year you are. We've got to learn to execute to finish drives, uh, to finish defensive series, those type of things. And, and again, the kicking game uh, came back this week and, and, and hurt us there in one instance. but. Uh, even that situation happened, it shouldn't have been put in that, that deal right there being that close. It feels like for a second straight week, if you take three or four plays away, uh, right. this one, you chalk it up in the win column. Uh, uh, a fumble by Dorian Miller fighting for extra yards, two yards away from the end zone from scoring a touchdown. Uh, and then a sudden change on a kickoff. Chris Williams, his first career kickoff return, fumbles at Newberry, recovers it at the one. How challenging is it to overcome those two instances back to back. Well, you also got to look at what those two kids did to contribute to that situation we were in yesterday. They, they both had made plays and they both had played hard and played with excitement. Uh, you, you've got to put yourself in situations where that turn of events doesn't make a difference. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, and uh, we're, we're going to grow from that. We're going to learn from that. And uh, we're going to learn to believe from that. that uh, if those two teams are, are going to be the top two teams and we're in that position, then let's learn to finish better. Let's learn to uh, believe better. Let's learn to keep the faith better and, uh, and go out and put some games away. You, you bring that stuff up and you, you talk about growth. How much of this is attributable to the youth of this team? Oh, I, I would never attribute any of that. That's. Uh, <laughs> we're, we're not. <laughs> we're not. We're not going to make a mistake about being young. We're not going to make a mis uh, an excuse about being young. An excuse about being injured. We're, we're going to play football like Carson Newman football uh, is supposed to be played, and we're going to man up and cowboy up when we need to, and 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 we're going to get it done. We have uh, seven games to go. Uh, we've got a uh, majority of them at home, and so let's let's tee it up and let's go. How important is it to maintain that attitude then? Well, I, I think it's important that you maintain that attitude for uh, uh, this is supposed to be uh, uh, a learning laboratory. That's what football is supposed to be for young men. I mean, uh, it's not about the NFL. It's about learning how to grow up, learning how to be a better man. Then this is, this is where you learn. Uh, thank goodness in a Sunday school lesson this morning, I uh, saw something read about uh, uh, knowing the, having the faith and believing doesn't mean you won't face adversity, but it means you will understand how to overcome adversity. Uh, and you, if you have that faith, if you have that belief, you'll get that done. And we're just, you know, when you say execution, it's a growing up process. Uh, you see that. Let's make sure we improve on that. Let's find ways to do it better. Uh, thank goodness we, we took control, uh, took better care of the football. Mm -hmm. uh, so uh, we're on our way. I, I believe these kids are going to get it turned around. The light bulb is going to come on, you know, and, and uh, ring the bell. Carson Newman falls at home to the Newberry Wolves 25-21, to 21, and we'll break down the first half after these messages on the Mike Turner Show. Back on the Mike Turner Show is Carson Newman falls at home to the Newberry Wolves 25-21. to 21. Mike, a first half where you fall behind 7-0, uh, but the second quarter unquestionably belongs to Carson Newman. A uh, 21 to 3 run to borrow the term from basketball. Uh, what enabled the Eagles to be so successful in that second period? Well, I think we uh, we got to a point there we were a little bit more wide open. Um, we didn't make some mistakes that we had made maybe in the first quarter. I mean, we had drives in the first quarter. We just needed to sustain them mm -hmm. to keep going. 
But we had some kids that stepped up and made some plays. Uh, Derek Evans is an exciting young man at quarterback. He's going to get better and better as far as a, an option guy. But he can throw the football. He can get on the perimeter and make things happen. Uh, we've got receivers that, um, you know, when people try to play the option, they play it in different ways. And that enables you to have receivers that sometimes are running open at different times. And Derek found a good way yesterday of getting the ball to him. He talk about Derek Evans also I mean finds the end zone twice on the ground including one run there in the second quarter I don't know if it was a broken play or what but uh, he went one on six right to, to get to the right pylon uh, what about his athleticism enables him to do stuff like oh, that it's, uh, it, that's that's why he's a guy that you look at to be a quarterback uh, he, he's learning more as a quarterback to not uh, be so freewheeling to make sure he's taking care of his assignment first and then make a play happen. Uh, but yesterday, he, he the protection broke down there at one point, and instead of sitting there patting the ball, which I'm so proud of him, uh, you know, he goes up the field, makes something happen. He's got a sense about him. He's got a keen sense about him about protection. He know, he does know well where the ball's going, who's it supposed to go into. If it's not there, he'll go out and make a play. Get your fir first really full game dose of. The combination of Jared Dillingham and Deontay Thomas in the backfield, uh, both of them touch the ball 17 times. Both of them get over 70 yards rushing. Right. Uh, how do you grade out what they what they did on the ground? Well, I saw the grades this morning. Uh, broke down the video grade about 6 a.m. this morning, so that was a good start. Uh, but both of them graded about the same. Graded in the low 80s there. Uh, well, they 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 they, 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 they got in there, and made some tough yardage, and made some things happen. Uh, we've just got to keep anticipating it and trying to hit it one step faster if we can out of the backfield. That one step faster will maybe allow us to, to break an arm tackle, okay, or break a hand tackle on, on our ankle. And speaking of one step faster, Dimitri Salisbury, career long 39 yard wow. uh, touchdown run to put you up uh, 14 to 10 uh, at the time. Uh, what a sweet moment for the junior out of Georgia. Oh, yeah, what a, what a great kid and what a great team player. and. And he's a guy that everybody roots for him to do something well. And to see him break it there, give that kind of effort. And then once he saw that goal line, uh, it, it's a good thing all the officials got out of the way and everybody else because he, <laughs> he was going to get it in there. Well, Carson Newman led Newberry at the halftime break 21 to 10. And we take a gander at those first half highlights. Break open this scoreless tie with 10-12 left in the first quarter. Snap back to Jones. Blitz comes up the middle, throws over the middle of the field, has a man in the end zone, and he hangs on. Touchdown, Newberry. Markel Castle, the preseason first-team all-conference wide receiver. It's the slant over the middle of the field. It's a 12-yard score, and Newberry has the lead. 6-0, 10-02 left first quarter. Jones in the gun, man to his right. Jones drops back to pass, settles in the middle of the end zone, throws, and it is picked off, intercepted by Mario Messier. Reaches up and grabs it over the top of the big tight end from Middle Tennessee State, Sean Smith. And Mezier hauls in his first pick of his Carson Newman career. Mason and McCara. Miller, the lone wide receiver, split to the wide side right. Evans under center. Newberry pinches in their defensive line. Evans takes quarterback keeper. Leaps over the pile, pile and he's in for six. Touchdown, Carson Newman. QB sneak, the charm on the second time. And the Eagles with a PAT of tying this one up. Evans under center, takes the snap. Wrap to the left side, Salisbury. Good run, breaks free across the 30. Moving left sideline, tight roping inside the five. Dives for the pylon, and he steps out. No, they give it to him. Touchdown, Carson Newman. How about a little steak sauce with your touchdown? Dimitri Salisbury puts Carson Newman on top, 13 to 10, with 540 left in the second quarter. 39 yards, a career-long run for the junior out of St. Mary's, Georgia. Evans under center, split backs, Miller in motion, the wide side right. Evans thinks, rolls the pocket right, settles, throws, deep ball along the right sideline. Jump ball going up and getting it. Darvie DeBose complete inside the Wolves 30 and yanked down at the 25 yard line by Truesdale. The old heave ho! And it gives the Eagles the first down. Evans under center takes, 
Runs to the right, bounces it out, freelancing. Evans a stiff arm, he leaps for the pylon, and Evans is in! Touchdown, Carson Newman! Derek Evans, a broken play, does that one all by himself. And he puts the Eagles up by 10, 20 to 10, with 21.3 ticks left in the second quarter. Trips go to the wide side right. Ball spotted left hash at the Wolves' own 45. New quarterback into the game for the Wolves. Rolls the pocket right and throws the deep ball along the right sideline. Jump ball and an interception. Darius Williams weaving his way to the right at the 30. He's stood up and stacked up and finally knocked down by the quarterback, Sumner Cooler, making a play downfield at the 31-yard line. So a pick to end the first half. Those are the first half highlights. Eagles up on the Newberry Wolves 21 to 10 uh, at the halftime break. Mike, a, a defense that shut down Newberry as well in that second quarter. What stuck out to you about the, the effort uh, of your defenders? Uh, I'm just, uh, you know, we had a couple kids that got injured last week, had some guys that stepped up uh, uh, to take their place. I, I think the front part of it, uh, one thing we did well was we pushed the front pretty good and we had linebackers flowing and plugging and uh, we forced them into doing some things that I don't think they really wanted to do that quick. I, I knew they uh, were probably going to try to throw the football a little bit more than they had been, but I was really proud of our defense flying around and being persistent. You know, uh, we gave up a first down or two there when we shouldn't have on third and long, but they still rallied, they didn't get down, and I'm just so pleased with how hard they're playing. Uh, how determined they're playing and how they're playing together. It felt like a, I don't want to say a breakout game because they're known commodities, but Jordan Price, Ross Pryor, game for your defensive ends, really, both of them with eight, right. eight tackles. Right. Well, they were, they were in, in the right position. Uh, they had the right kind of movement. And, you know, one guy stands out. It's because there's two or three other guys mm -hmm. on defense that are doing something to make it happen. And uh, that's why this is a great team game, but I'm really, really – proud of our defensive kids and their effort. It's just, uh, it's fun to watch them be excited about playing defense. Is there anything that you can say about a Brian Bembry, a Javon Barnes, a Jamarco Withrow, uh, a Montel Presley? Because th these are your interior linemen right. who really don't show up on the stat sheet right. week to week. But I, I would th think it's fair to say that uh, they're doing some stuff defensively that's sure. making stuff happen. Well, they're, they're doing some things when a linebacker shows up with tackles it's because somebody up front's keeping one or two occupied. Uh, same thing with the defensive end. And I, we're so uh, excited about, and finally we have some depth here, not a whole lot, you know, but we feel like we're one and two deep that, uh, you know, they can get those kids breaks to get them some breathers in there and keep fresh legs. Uh, and it keeps that with the kind of offenses you're playing where people are trying to zone you and overtake you and scoop you the backside. So, uh, but those kids are really playing a great, great part in their role. Carson Newman falls to the defending sack champs, the Newberry Wolves, in week four, and we'll take you through the second half after these messages on the Mike Turner Show. Back on the Mike Turner Show as the Eagles fall to the Newberry Wolves, 25-21. to 21. I'm Adam Cavalier alongside the Eagles head man, Mike Turner. Uh, Mike, a second half, uh, talked about starting fast and you were moving the football on the first drive of the, the second half, but uh, we, we touched on it in the first segment, but a fumble by Dorian Miller fighting for extra yards sure. to try to get into the end zone. How frustrating are moments like that, and how do you teach from moments like that? Well, you, you teach from moments like that about there you are, there's how it happens, there's how it can happen. Now it takes just a little bit more. You know, we talked early uh, back in the winter about the difference between being good and great about that far. All right, well, so, and there's times in there in that second half on offense we're about that far, you know, from really getting it done well. Uh, and, and, you know, when you score 21 points in the first half and, and we come out in the second half and we don't score, that's, that's on me, man. That's my fault. We got, we got to do a better job on offense of uh, uh, producing points. Uh, we've got to keep drives alive. I know I keep saying that, but drives alive mean the clock's running. That means the defense is resting. That means – that means you're wearing down a defense where it may be able to give up a big play. Uh, so it's all, it's all a part of put together. It felt like there were a few uh, untimely penalties that hampered drives in a big way too. Uh, I can recall a chop block, uh, a few pre-snap penalties. Again, we've touched on it, but reared their heads at uh, yep. the worst possible. Well, you, you know, we, uh, 
we had some things that happened yesterday uh, to our kids, and, and they've got to, you know, you got to grow up. you got to handle that. If somebody on defense jumps, shift, that doesn't sound like what we talk about. you got to handle that. Okay, that's, that's part of football. No excuse. you you got to handle that part of it, uh, even though it is untimely. All right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's very untimely. But hey, you got to be able to handle those things. Uh, when we, a kid makes an aggressive penalty, that, that's part of football. Uh, but the penalties that, that, that aren't smart penalties are, are those things that get called. And, you know, we, we, we had one or two or three or four of those in there. And, and it seemed like we were going to make it through pretty much unscathed. And then they started. And that's concentration. And maybe we need to keep some uh, fresher people in the game to, to overcome that. Uh, so mentally they were sharper. But we're going to go evaluate it. We're going to start handling it. Um, uh, making some people be responsible for that and having some accountability. You, you look at the the, set, the fourth quarter, you, Newberry goes, scores the go-ahead touchdown with 38 seconds left, but still have a shot to win the game. And uh, a long ball to Quentin Phillips along the right sideline, getting game of inches oh, just yeah. that close. and uh, that close. He's hauling in a 65-yard touchdown pass, and you've got a miracle on Moss. Oh, actually, we had, we had a great set it up with the four wide receivers and through the, through the curl and got the first down. You know, got up on the ball, got that set up, and had uh, had what we wanted, and even had what we wanted again the next time, and, and we missed the protection a little bit. But you know, there's two weeks in a row, and, and uh, it, it's the same thing. Like I said, we take responsibility. We got to handle that about scoring points in the second half, so that that's not in that predicament that close. Mm -hmm. But gosh, those kids are fighting to the horn went off. Yeah, you, know, you you you've got no complaint about their heart. Uh, you got no complaint about uh, the getting after it part of football, uh, and I really don't have any. I don't have any complaint about them believing and getting after it. So there was a great disappointment there yesterday, a great heartbreak. It was, uh, and you know you've got to learn how to handle that too. Do you feel like it's only a matter of time before everything clicks and it comes for you? I think so. I sure hope so. Okay, I sure <laughs> hope so. Uh, mercy. I, sure, I certainly hope so. Um, and like I said, hey, it's about them. This whole this whole thing is about them. It's a whole thing about them learning how to play free, how to play opened up and wide open and play, and and, and learn how to play and not have any regrets. You know, and and uh, as long as we can do that, hey, I, I'm I've been there and done that. We can handle that part. All right. But I, I want those kids to make sure they get the full experience out of that. I think we've got them turned loose. I think they're playing hard. They're playing together. We've got to learn how to handle some uh, uh, some things that don't go well for us. How you got to uh, that happens now? What am I going to do? I got to get out of the mud. I got to get back on the fast track. Carson Newman falls to the Newberry Wolves, 25 to 21, and we take a gander at the second half highlights. What Evans does? He takes the snap, rolls the pocket right, settles, throws. Along the boundary right side, a great over-the-shoulder grab made by Dorian Miller. Brings it in at the 40 and brought down down at the 35 along the boundary right side. White knocked him down. The ball came out after Miller hit the turf, but the officials say catch initially. Newberry pleading, pleading for an incompletion. Carson Newman from the Wolves' 27-yard line. 10-29 left in the third quarter. Eagles up 21-10. Evans takes, throws the slant, complete to Miller at the 25. Miller angling his way between the hashes. 10-5, Miller doesn't get into the end zone. He is tackled at the one and then fumbles it. Newberry recovers it in the end zone. Joe Blue saves the touchdown and the Wolves take over, recovering a fumble in the end zone. Snap back to Jones, hands off Clark right side. Clark hitting the backfield, and Brian Bimbry, a great form tackle, no gain, trying the right side of the line. Second down, another yard to go for the Wolves. Bimbry surging into the backfield, and a great stop. Sends Chris Williams three yards deep middle of the end zone. He'll take it out straight away. Williams to the 15, tries to bounce it out to the right sideline. Lost the football. Newberry trying to pick it up along the left boundary. Waters grabs it. Check that McCord grabs it, and he's brought down at the one-yard line. No, check that. That is a new quarterback in Sumner Cooler. He wants a deep ball down the left sideline. Jump ball, Des Farrell goes up for it, and he picks it off at the 35-yard line. He was angling for Irby with Sumner Cooler, but Cooler 
throws his second interception of the day. Des Farrell sliding in with an INT. Jones in the gun, five wide. Trips to the wide side right, two to the short side left. Snap back ways tight for Jones. Throws, middle of the field, complete to Markel Castle along the right hash marks. Castle pulls over a defender and sprints to the end zone. Touchdown, Newberry. Castle absorbed a hit at the 20, turned around and raced right across the goal line. 30 yards for the score. Newberry 25, Carson Newman 21. Evans in the gun, Dillingham to his right. Evans takes, rolls the pocket right, settles, throws, long ball. Has Quinton Phillips over the top, just outside his hands, incomplete. I wonder if Phillips lost it at the last second. He was wide open, had it down at the five. Laquan White was in coverage, but Phillips had him beat. Those are the second half highlights as the Eagles fall to the Newberry Wolves, 25 to 21. When the Mike Turner Show returns, it's time for the Eagles Spotlight. And Michael Watring, he'll put it on Brian Bembry. That's after these messages. Back on the Mike Turner Show here in week four of the Carson Newman football season. Time now for our Eagle Spotlight. And this week, Michael Watrang puts it on defensive lineman Brian Bembry. Before recruiting heated up for Brian Bembry, he had a conversation with God seeking guidance. Carson Newman produced a scholarship offer shortly after, and several Power 5 schools followed suit. Bembry reflected and decided that Jefferson City was his best destination. I had no offers before Carson Newman, and I prayed. I got on my knees and I begged God to, to if he wanted me to go to play football somewhere, that he'd bring me an offer from Division One, I, Division Two. I, I don't care where it was, that he'd bring me an offer. And the very next morning, I had a call from my coach saying Carson Newman was here to offer you. And that was one reason that was uh, kind of confirmed that Carson Newman was the place where I needed to be. And when I met the coaching staff and uh, on my visit, um, they they stood out from all the other coaches that came down to talk to me. So uh, when when I so when I came on my unofficial visit here and met all the coaches, it really confirmed to me that uh, this was the place I needed to be. Bembry's desire to grow as a person has been met with encouragement from everyone in the program. His position coach is veteran mentor Dan Redding, who has taught several future NFL stars in his day and understands how important life off the field is. And you're selling the Christian character, and I think that's what attracted Brian to us. He wants more of something more than just football. He wants to be the, he wants to develop himself spiritually. It's very important to him through those aspects of everything. His development as a person has aided his efforts between the lines. Bembry missed the 2016 season with an injury, but defensive coordinator Larry Slade saw how hard the defensive tackle worked to get back to full strength. He is a phenomenal person first and character has so much to do with it. When you look at him, his quality, the big thing is he plays extremely hard. He plays with great effort. Tools are not an area of concern for Bembry. His coaches say that he is big, strong, athletic, and fast. Wrap those characteristics into one, and Redding sees the formula for success. Numbers-wise, it could be unlimited. It depends on how he develops and how he works. He's a great young man, works extremely hard. It's very important to him that he do well. Um, so it's, it's going to depend on how things progress the next few years. But uh, he's got a lot of upside. The defensive unit features nine sophomores that see significant snaps. The results have been impressive through four weeks, but Bembry believes there is no ceiling for this team. While success on the field has been evident, Bembry is focused on his personal improvement. Not only on the field that I've grown and, and learned from these coaches, but also uh, during spiritually and uh, academically, these coaches care uh, about you off the field as, as long as uh, on the field too. So it's not just uh, on the field, uh, you're here for us. My job is to coach and it's not to help you grow, grow in life. And uh, that's what's really kind of helped me out a lot here. Slade stated that Bembry's work ethic and personal standards will translate to achievement in football and in life. After all, the guidance that Carson Newman's coaching staff provides goes further than X's and O's. For the Mike Turner Show, I'm Michael Watrang. All right, thank you very much, Michael Watrang, Mike Turner, and Brian Bembry, a kid who unquestionably wants to be at Carson Newman and feels like it's the right place for him. Oh, there's no question. He is at the right place at the right time. Uh, he's the kind of kid you want at Carson Newman. Uh, he's, a, he's a kid that's a, a friend of many. I think he's, a, he's a very much an asset to this program and to this university. 
Turn your attention now to the Catawba College, Catawba Indians, the only team that's nationally ranked in the AFC A coaches poll from the South Atlantic Conference. Curtis Walker's group uh, has played pretty stout defense, shut out Mars Hill uh, and David Salmon in the second half of their game this past week. Uh, doing it with defense, but Patrick O'Brien, a uh, transfer from UNC Pembroke at quarterback, has added a little offensive punch for the Indians. W what do you see out of that unit? Well, there, there's no question. They're, they're playing at a high level. Uh, they've always played at a high level on their defense. And uh, you know, I know Curtis is in charge of that part of it. And on offense now with the uh, transfer of, of the kid from UNC Pembroke, uh, that's really allowed them to turn loose even more. The running back, uh, you know, it opens up the running game when you have a guy that's a very, very proficient in the passing game. I have some big play weapons, Sam Mobley and Keon West at wide receiver. Uh, those two are right with Dorian Miller for the, the top receiving right. <laughs> mark in the league, which is, still takes me a moment to, to grasp that Carson Newman's offense has produced the, the league's leading receiver through uh, four weeks. But ha what sticks out to you about the, the guys who catch passes for him? Well, you know, it, it, it's, they've really become, uh, in years, uh, you know, they pretty much were a one-way, you know, either offense or they run the football or throwing the football and committed either way. But right now, I think they're very, very multiple. Uh, and they're what I want our kids to get to. They're out there expecting to make plays. That's the difference in them, I think, right mm -hmm. now, offensively. They're expecting to make plays. They're not, they're not hoping. They're not wishing. They're expecting that to happen. My pleasure as always. Thanks, uh, thanks for the time. All right, Adam. Thank you, buddy. Appreciate it. That's Carson Newman head football coach Mike Turner. I'm the voice of the Eagles, Adam Cavalier. And this has been the Mike Turner Show. Thanks for watching.